Hello and welcome to the B-Class, a member of the compact car family but one of the most flexible passenger cars that Mercedes-Benz is selling today. You can tell that just from a glance outside or peering into the cabin, but what you may not notice at first is where I am. It may be a member of the compact car family, but it has enough room in the boot for an entire me. Pretty convenient, isn't it? And actually, convenience, space and efficiency are the three standout features for me about this model. So let's dive in, explore the B-Class and see what really makes this car tick. There are two versions of this third generation B-Class on sale in the UK today, Sport and AMG line. Sport gets the twin blade grille on the nose as well as 17 inch wheels on all four corners. AMG line models get a single bar grille with the diamond pins that make the star look like it's floating, as well as 18 inch AMG designed five twin spoke wheels on all four corners and a different diffuser and exhaust arrangement at the rear. You can see it compared to Sport here. But one thing that does stay the same for all new B classes is the headlights. LED high performance headlights with a twin LED light strip signature above give it an unmistakable presence out on the road. Compared to the model that came before it, this new generation of B class has grown. It's wider, taller, as well as longer, now coming in at 4.4 meters about the same length as a large adult saltwater crocodile, or actually exactly the same length, down to the millimetre, as the current A-Class. That includes the wheelbase and the front and rear overhangs. So the big dimensional difference between the two models is in the height, with the B-Class being a full 12 centimetres taller, and that's the same height difference between me and my friends who claim that they are almost six foot tall. They're not. Anyway, I quite like the way that the roofline gently curves. It peaks just above the driver's head before starting to curve down into the integrated rear spoiler. It's a nice touch. And the window line, that rises very gently as well, shown off and highlighted by the chrome window surrounds, but I think it complements the shoulder line as well. It gives it a very nice side profile. Moving inside, we're met with a cabin which will seem pretty familiar from the rest of the compact car range. And you won't hear me complaining for a moment. I think it looks great. I like the ergonomics of it. Everything is well within easy reach as well. And the first thing actually that I noticed about this new generation of B-Class, seeing the press photos, was the shape of the dash itself, the way that it curves out towards you. And this very nicely presents the two screens that run the infotainment. The infotainment system in this car is of course MBUX and if you've used any Mercedes-Benz infotainment system really from the last few years, probably even from the turn of the century actually, you'll be up to speed with this in no time. The basics of how to operate it are exactly the same, a lot of the same logic is there. I find it quite easy to hop out of something running this system and jumping back into something running Command NTG 2.5 from 2008. There are a few different ways of operating the system. You can touch the screen itself, use the centrally mounted trackpad, which gives you a haptic feedback so you know that your input has been registered, or there are shortcut buttons for all of the main features flanking it on either side. Whilst driving though, I tend to use the two steering wheel mounted control pads, the one on the left for the central screen, the one on the right for the instrument display. And of course, you can use your voice. You can ask it to change the air conditioning temperature, switch on your own heated seat, and when connected up to Mercedes Me, you can ask it what the weather is going to be like today or what the weather's going to be like in Bracknell on Thursday. Moving away from the screens, the cabin itself is wide, open, airy, very tall as well. Headroom is fantastic in this model. In terms of the driving position itself, the seats sit a whole nine centimetres higher than they do in an A-Class. So what does that mean? Well, it's very easy to get in and out of, you know. There's no slump down or drop down into the cabin. You don't need to climb up either. So it's great if you are a taller driver like myself. Visibility is great as well, with lots of nice large glass surfaces all around us. Very big door mirrors either side as well, so looking behind you isn't an issue. And on that, the B-pillar isn't too thick either, so when you look over your shoulder, your view isn't obstructed. In the rear of the cabin, there is, again, plenty of space to play around with. This is me behind my driving position, which... I'll admit it is actually in the back of the car, but I'm not squished in. And thanks to the nice and low floor, I'm not licking distance away from my kneecaps. 
The seats are pretty flexible too. You can lower one, two, or all of them, depending on what you need. You can also adjust the backrest or for models built sort of midway through 2019 onwards, you're actually able to slide the seat. The one on the driver's side slides individually and these two both slide forwards and back together. As for boot space, well, we've already seen that I can fit in the boot of the B-Class, but there is more to it than that. Every new generation B-Class gets the Easy Pack tailgate, which is a power opening and closing tailgate, which can be done by a button on the key, how I got out. Or if the car has keyless entry, then you can use a kicking motion under the bumper to open it up. Boot space with the seats, parcel shelf and floor in place is 440 litres, but if you take out the parcel shelf and drop the boot floor down to its lower position, this rises to 575 litres when loading to the roof. If you need even more space than that, fold down the seats, take out the parcel shelf and you have a load space larger than what you get in a new C-Class estate. So those are the space and convenience boxes ticked with ease, but the other thing that springs to mind for me with the B-Class is efficiency. Under the bonnet for new builds there is a mixture of 1.3 litre petrols and 2 litre diesels with 1.5 and 2 litre diesels and petrols available until the end of 2020. The engines that make their way under the bonnet of the B-Class are among the most powerful yet most efficient engines that Mercedes-Benz have ever put in a road car. So, what are they like? In a word, I would say, well, smooth really. The model that I'm driving at the moment is a B200D. This is actually my pick of the range for the B-Class. I've sampled quite a few of them, but for the driving that I do, which is a lot of long motorway cruises, this is great. It is barely whispering above 1600 RPM at seventh gear at exactly 59 miles an hour at the moment. And if I do need to get a bit of a wiggle on, it can just drop three gears like that. The eight speed twin clutch box is lightning fast to react to the order of a heavy right foot. Taking powertrain options out of the equation for the moment, What's the car like in general? Okay, ride and refinement. Refinement's great, not a lot of wind noise at all. The suspension, like with every German car I've driven recently, comes into a class of its own at motorway speeds and is also very capable around town and good at soaking up the patchwork quilt of tarmac, spot fixes and giant chasms and crevices that have opened up in the road surface about two miles behind me. It does feel like there's a safety net around you at all times. You get the impression that the B-Class is looking out for you. There's a great mixture of active and reactive safety systems like active brake assist, lane tracking, as well as ESP. So the car won't let you get too silly. But the systems aren't intrusive until they need to be, in my opinion and in my experience. The Active Brake Assist is very handy. That has got me out of trouble a couple of times or prevented me from going into trouble, whichever way you want to look at it. Speed Limit Assist, again, very handy, especially if I'm driving around towns that I'm not familiar with or if I've just missed the speed limit sign. I'm gonna go past a 50 sign right now at 23 miles an hour. It's registered that and it is displaying it on the screen for me. I've mentioned already that the car is perhaps best suited to cruising between towns or, well, tackling the towns themselves, but that doesn't mean that this car just falls apart like a Victoria sponge cake that you've dropped on the ground when you show it a corner or two. In fact, I actually think it handles very well. The steering weights up very nicely. It's nice and smooth, stable. You can corner quite flat, actually, provided you guide it in rather than throwing it in. Plus, good visibility all around really helps to keep the car in the right position. Even flying over bumps like that, it remains quite settled. I think you'd have to try quite hard, actually, to get this car out of shape. Maybe I won't do that today. I think I'd actually quite enjoy taking one of these on a track. I think it would be hilarious. Hilarious fun, too. Efficiency is one of the defining characteristics of the B-Class for me, so if you want to maximise your efficiency, take a look at the plug-in hybrid B250E. 
This marries up the 1.3 litre turbocharged petrol engine with a 10.6 kilowatt hour capacity battery, which can give you a zero emissions driving range of up to 42 miles and allows you to choose whether you would like to run the car on the battery, on the engine or both. Choosing the right specification for your B-Class has been made easy. There's a great standard equipment offering and if you'd like some more options and features to play with, take a look at the option packages. Executive adds things like front and rear parking sensors, privacy glass and a larger MBUX central display. Premium adds ambient lighting and keyless entry so you can use kick motion to open the boot if you like. And Premium Plus fully loads the car. We've just had a specification change for 2021. Prices for the car are on screen now, but for full details, take a look at the brochure that we've put in the description. Space, convenience, and efficiency. Those are just three of the things that I think makes the B-Class stand out and helps it to make a really strong case for itself as an ultra-flexible MPV, and maybe actually a good example of a anti-normal compact car. If you're after something with a tall, commanding driving position, plenty of space inside for people and stuff, but would prefer a hatchback body style to an SUV, then I think this is well worth considering. If you'd like to find out more about the B-Class and the rest of the Mercedes-Benz passenger car range, head over to our website, take a look at our approved used stock, which includes these two cars that we've done the video with and make sure to subscribe to our channel too, so you don't miss a thing. I may not fit in a suit, but I can fit in a B-Class. How about that?